Thank you very much indeed for staying with us on this night. We now have in the studio the Pioneer Permanent Secretary and Director General, Bureau of Public Service Reforms, Dr. Goke Adegoroye. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Doctor, for coming to News Night. Thank you for having me. Happy Independence, Nigerians. Yes, uh, happy Independence uh, to Nigeria. Uh, you, you, you have been uh, at the center of this celebration for the past few days. You had the honor to speak at the uh, symposium at the State House a couple of days ago. And then the, the first thing I, I noticed you said there was that you congratulated the president uh, for resetting the economy. Uh, and, and then some would say that, some would disagree with you that uh, the past few uh, months of his administration uh, have been uh, very uh, unstable, some would say, you know. So how would you assess um, uh, him as uh, uh, resetting the economy? I will still say that um, he has done quite well in that. Mm -hmm. Remember that the first challenge for any leader is the ability and the courage to take tough decisions. Right. He showed that. And this is not trying to cast as passion on those before. All Nigerians knew that the thing that President Tinubu did should have been done like 10 years ago. But then the penultimate leadership um, could not do it. You could say, yes, some people um, uh, protested at that time in 2012. But then the courage was there. And if you re also remember what uh, Minister Angosi said, Minister Angosi said there were certain decisions that they should have taken, including saving for the rainy day, which they didn't do, and including also ensuring that this subsidy was gone. Hmm. And then there was also the last president, and we've been toying with it. He's been announcing it's going to be this, it's going to be that, and that it was not done. Hmm. And because it was not done in the period, Nigeria started borrowing money. And the debt management office now started raising his voice that we're actually you know, going too much. And many Nigerians also knew. So what he has done is he has demonstrated an uncanny courage mm -hmm. to face the issue. Of course, when you face the issue as a leader, there are going to be some ripples because people had already relaxed and they were enjoying. I mean, my wife is a Nigerian now, but originally is Mexican. And anytime we go to Mexico, I usually say, wow, this is how much you are paying. We are paying for equivalent of one liter, an equivalent of Nigerian 1,100 naira. Mm. And I say that <laughs> in my country, a 75CL water is cheaper than a one liter uh, 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 PMS. It cannot go that way. So something has to give. And the fact that something gave and repercussions are coming is also addressing them. He hmm. appears to be showing a lot of listening capacity and a lot of responsive capacity. If you remember, I talk about responsiveness yeah. in, in, my, in, my, in my own talk. Yes, uh, yes again, <coughs> uh, some 30 years ago, uh, uh, the then Chief M.K. Abiola was talking about Hope 93, you know. Now, uh, fast forward to 2023, we're talking about renewed hope. You know, uh, one would think that uh, rightly so, anyway, that President Bola Chinobu took uh, the slogan from Abiola. Then you, you urged the president to prioritize uh, certain areas, certain indices in the Renewed Hope agenda. What areas uh, are you looking at? All the areas are important. He talked about job creation. He talked about fighting corruption. In fact, to me, I think that is actually the elephant in the room that needs to be tackled. And in tackling that, the entire Nigeria must be able to give support. Mm. So he's talking about security. You know, a, a lot of things are actually listed there. All of them, it's not something you have to do in relay. All of them have to be tackled at the same time. Okay, uh, but, but then where you say that the elephants in the room are unemployment and corruption, uh, what are the recommendations uh, that you want to bring to the table? Whoa, a lot of massive you know, recommendation in terms of corruption. I mean, Nigerians do know. But the tragedy with our system is that as Nigerians, 
even those who are not in government, we seem to also celebrate what comes out of corruption. Uh. And, you know, in, in, in some people will tell you that some people, whether in, the, in, in, in their churches and in their mosques or in the traditions and so on, uh, you're giving them chief testy tattoo to be able to celebrate them. Whereas when I was growing up, you actually uh, frown at people who suddenly, you know, uh, have come about wealth that they cannot explain. And that is why some time ago, six years ago, I said, in the issue of corruption, it looks like we have applied so many things. I remember, if you remember, when Obasanjo came in, he was the one who established EFCC, it was on corruption. He was the one who established ICPC, it was on corruption, you know. And there are so many. And when I was Director General of Bureau of Public Service Reform, we had a DVD that we call Integrity, Public Service, you know, at work, through integrity. I mean, you know, trying to showcase the kind of integrity issues, values system that are broken in the service, people who are manipulating records, people who are twisting certain things, because it starts from that. When you want to appoint, when you want to recruit, and it's not based on defined number of people that you require, that is, you are not synchronizing the manpower, you know, with, with, you know, with, 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 with actually what you need, and then you are also not doing it on merit, you find so many things going on. And unfortunately, the moment you begin to get those people into government, the corruption begins to uh, 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 manifest. That is why about six, seven years ago, I came up with this proposal that maybe since Nigerians like to pray a lot, maybe one of the things we need to do is to get something like an immunotherapy against <laughs> corruption. An immunotherapy that would say that when you have a national pledge, I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful to be this. Then we introduce a second stanza that will say that if in my duties, whether as a public servant or as a private sector person working with government, mm -hmm. if I exhibit any kind of traits that will make me acquire so much wealth as to cause misery to my fellow Nigerians, you know, to cause hardship, to cause their death, you are supposed to build road. You didn't build the road very well. The road developed potholes and people are dying there. That, you know, if I do this, mm -hmm. may their misery come upon me. Okay, now, uh, and also those who share the benefits of corruption with me. Okay, that then. maybe when we say that, maybe then those, who, want to, those yeah. who are looking forward, yeah. celebrating you for having juicy position, will not be afraid that they don't want this kind of thing to call on you. Okay, then. But one of the major challenges that we face as a nation has been integrating every culture, <clears throat> every person, every ethnic group. And uh, uh, somehow we were able to manage to get um, uh, a somewhat national conference. I don't want to say sovereign national conference. Uh, when uh, the former president, uh, Dr. Uh, Billy Jonathan, uh, Jonathan. Like Jonathan was there. Now, uh, the recommendations of that national conference uh, has, have been uh, somehow thrown to the gutters. What, what would you suggest that the current president do to ensure that uh, we bring everybody on board uh, regarding uh, implementing that recommendation? Let me correct you. I, don't, I wouldn't say that the recommendation of that conference has been thrown to the gutters because I am aware mm. that the last government set up a committee under uh, Malam Nasir El Rufai, mm -hmm. and you know, was an APC driven one. And a lot of those things were actually coming. And the recommendation from the Malam Nasir El Rufai's committee is actually quite deep. One thing you must know is this when a president comes in, you swear in a president on the basis of the current constitution, he upholds the constitution. So that president cannot come in and be telling you to go against the constitution unless you go by a kind of a referendum. That is one. Secondly, you must also recognize that, you know, when some of our leaders are talking, I've been listening recently, and I see some leaders saying, oh, we must go back to 1963 constitution, 1960 constitution. I mean, for a lot of people, many of you will not even really know what it is. People seem to forget that even at that time, there were ethnic nationalities that were feeling so much under pressure under that constitution. O originally, we had three regions, Western region, Eastern region, mm -hmm, yeah. and Northern region. And then later on, Midwest was carved out, despite the fact that we were operating in such a way that all the benefits in the Southwest, free education, all of them were enjoying it. Despite the fact that the deputy to our law was also even from, you know, mid Midwest. At that time, remember also that the TV, you know, Middle Belt Forum were also 
you know, agitating. They call the you know, Cross River or Goja group were also agitating. We seem to forget this. So when you say you want to now go back to that constitution, those people are not going to agree. Because, you know, remember, remember Adaka Boro, some of you may not know, Adaka Boro was a one man trying to fight for the freedom of the Niger Delta. So how do we, how do we implement the recommendations from uh, that national conference that uh, Dr. G Goodluck Jonathan uh, put together? Tell me which one that you think is difficult you know, to implement. No, you are Tell here, me which you, no, one that is different. Here, no, you are here to, yes. to answer the questions. Yes. I'm not the one doing the answer. That's why we brought you here. Exactly. So that you can tell us uh, where to go from here. That is why I'm telling you that a lot of those recommendations actually would revolve around devolution of powers. And when the president came in, he has already signed about two or three of those. Those things about power, about railway, that were not before under concurrent list, had been signed. True federalism? Truth, what about we, that? What do you mean by true federalism? What do you mean by true federalism? You know, we seem to confuse what we have in Nigeria with the United States. In the United States, each of those states actually fought and got independence and they got merged. Mm. In our own, you have three regions, you know, you have actually three protectorates. Lagos Colony was, se was separate from the Southern Sa Protectorate. You know, they, they merged this, the, the Southern Protectorate with Lagos Colony, and then you now have the Northern I mean, Protectorate that was merged in, in uh, 1914. And then, after we became independent, what has been happening since then is that Nigeria is like somebody take Nigeria and you are using cutlass to be cutting them like that. So really, the way we are being cut, I mean, I am from Ondo State. I mean, I'm not different from those who are from Ekiti. Uh -huh. And I don't think you really want us to see each other. So the federalism we are talking about should be allow the, maybe the, what we call our geopolitical zones, uh -huh. allow them to be able to have some kind of level of integration. Right. And that's already happening. You have the you know the development agenda for you know Western Nigeria down at the agenda. Yeah. You also have now the, the brace Dawn agenda. Yeah. You have also the northeast. Yeah. Maybe through that, allow them to actually have some kind of cooperation. Right. To be able to go through certain things Thank you. like railway, like this, like that. And then so Thank just you. allow them to breathe. And if exactly. you are not talking about resource control, it's a totally different ballgame. Thank you very much. Yes. Indeed, Dr. Gweke Adegoroye. Uh, Pioneer Director General and now Permanent Secretary, uh, Bureau of Public Service Reforms. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us on Newsnight.